Hi, um, I was just doing some phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? Pardon me? I was just doing some phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? You're doing some phone witnessing. You just called the Kingdom Hall. Well, I don't mind. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, can I share scripture with you? You're doing some phone witnessing, and you're calling the Kingdom Hall, which is the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. Right, right. So you're going to witness to me? Is is that not allowed or something? Uh, well, yeah. Are you are you a witness? I like to witness. <laughs> okay, so you're you're uh, you're of a different faith, right? I'm a Bible reader. Okay, sure. You can share a scripture with me. Okay. Well, this is a really interesting one. I found it on the website jw.org. Mm -hmm. um, it's called In the Kingdom Interlinear Translation. Mm -hmm. Well, this is uh, the um, Apostle Thomas after he saw the risen Jesus. Um, and this is the Kingdom Interlinear, so it sounds a little awkward, but it says, Answered Thomas, and he said to him, The Lord of me and the God of me. And then Jesus said, um, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Happy are the ones not having seen and yet believe. So I was wondering, okay. why did he call him the Lord and Haseas the God? Well, you know, there's also a, you know, when in Acts 1 1, where it talks about, you know, being, that Jesus being a God. But Acts 1 1? But not in, yeah, Acts. But Wait, I've got to look that up. Hold on. It says a God, and, okay, I'm going to Acts. But not the God, but a God. One, one. What does it say? The former treatise I, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Well, I must have the wrong one here. I don't mm. have my Bible right in front of me. Well, it's still interesting. And in the words above the Greek, it even capitalizes God. This is on your, your website. And Jesus didn't seem to have a problem with it. He said he was, he commended him for believing. Well, so you, so you, what you're saying is, I know you believe in the Trinity. I didn't say anything. I just shared this verse with you. I didn't say I, any I know, comment. I that's what, that's your belief. I, I just want to know what you think about the actual words. Well, you know, if you, if, if you take things out of context, you know, sometimes that, you can you can make a lot of things mean what you want it to mean, but you know you think look at the life of Jesus and uh, all the times that he prayed to his heavenly Father. Right, right. The times that he said that the Father is greater than I. You know, if he was right. God, why would he say something like that? Well, first of all, him praying to his Father. Um, the historic Orthodox doctrine of the Trinity teaches that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit share in the same divine nature, yet are distinct persons. So um, that's not any argument. I mean, a few heretics say that, you know, Jesus is the Father or something like that. So as far as greater than I, I mean, um, the, there is a way in which even within the Trinity there is a rank, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father is called historically the unbegotten, and Jesus is the only begotten Son. The only begotten. Which, begotten. Yeah, who originates in the Father from eternity. So we call that eternal generation, not creation. Um, well, let me ask you this. Uh, uh -huh. You know, what you need to do is just even go to any uh, any any website and do a research on the origin of the Trinity. And you'll find that the Trinity was in existence and actually uh, originated from pagan uh, beliefs of the uh, of pagan gods. And it was not adopted as a Christian belief until the third century. Mm. So... And that was that was Emperor Constantine that that wanted to oh, bring no. a, that's state, just... a fusion that's a fusion of state yeah. and religion together to keep to keep his worshippers, you know, together. Yeah, that, no, the that, Trinity that actually where and you can find that on not on our yeah. website, but on any you do a research of any historical facts on the Trinity, even the Catholic Encyclopedia will tell you that. Do you know that you know, um I know I know a woman who's just really amazing and um She's a lawyer, and uh, she grew up in the Witnesses, and she decided to research what, what they used to use, the Trinity brochure, which is saying, you are telling me those things that are in that. 
And um, because she's a lawyer, kind of a high-level lawyer, she has access to every book, right? And she lo- obtained all the original sources, not online, but in print. And mm-hmm. she concluded that they are misquoting many of them because she read them in context. And then as you look at it, many other people have done the same thing. And you can you can see some of the original sources online or you can go find them. They use just partial quotes. They use dot, dot, dot and things like that to, you know, make it seem like. So it's interesting that you mentioned context and misquoting. So um, that actually led her to become a, a traditional Christian because she felt it was very deceptive. And um, you could talk to her if you want, but, you know, <laughs> she's real. Just fine. You know, yeah. you know we, we know what the Bible says. Yeah. And we believe the Bible for right. what it says. So would you, you confess, know, do you confess Jesus good. as Thomas did, as the Lord of you and the God of you, the God of you? You you can look at it in the kingdom in her linear. It's very interesting. Well, yeah, but you know what? You you have to look at the original uh, meanings of those words. Yeah. Uh, in the original Greek. Right. And, you know, in the original Greek. Right. You know, trans- translators will take. I'll give you an example. You know, um, you know when the translators uh, translate some words in the Bible, such as the the word shambles. You know, it's used. In, in today's language, you think a shambles is, you know, like a uh, a place that, uh, and this is where Jesus would preach at, in the shambles, it said, you know, in the original writing. But what does that translate as? Well, it's actually a meat market, you know, in, in the language that we use. But, you know, if you don't really get the true meaning of the true Hebrew and Greek words, you know, you, you, uh, you can make it mean anything you want it to mean. Yeah, there's nothing ambiguous about this. And as a matter of fact, in the Watchtower literature, I think it says Ha Theos is only used of Jehovah. Hello? number in the phone book. Um, I was just uh, wondering if you had a minute for a question. Sure. How can I help? Oh, yeah. Well, I read this thing. It it was really surprising. I I read this thing. Um, It's about Mormons, and I just wondered what you thought about it. Do you mind if I read it to you? You read something about Mormons? Yeah. I just wanted to see what you guys think of it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I just wanted to see what you guys thought about it. I know you're into the Bible and stuff. Sure. Are you a Mormon? No, no. But it it just it it was just so interesting. Um, It says um, it's this person, uh, Christine. What's your name? I'm Dennis. Okay. Well, um, it is a a professor. She was at Brigham Young University, I think, or at least she was a scholar or something, and she um, was a Mormon. But anyways. She was talking about her experience, and she said, um, I hadn't dared to ask anyone who it was Christ spoke of when he said, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They, too, will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The Mormons identify those other sheep as the Nephites. That is, the people the Book of Mormon teaches were the ancient inhabitants of the Americas who lived at the same time Christ did. The LDS Church teaches that Christ spent part of his time between his death and resurrection here in America teaching those Nephites. Um, so I just wondered what you thought about that. And, okay, so and what is your question? Well, about the other sheep. Do you think they're Nephites? That's a very intriguing question. Um, I'm so glad to hear that you have an interest um, in wanting to know the answer to that. Let me ask you this. Um, are you a Bible reader? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Um, and what is your view of who the other sheep are? Uh, well, I just take the historic view that Christians have had for 2,000 years. It's it's very consistent. It's based on Ephesians chapter 2, and it's also based on the whole Old Testament that 
predicted that in the time of Messiah, Gentiles would come to his light and they would be part of the new covenant. In Ephesians 2, it talks about the Jews and Gentiles, that the dividing wall between them was broken down and they would become one body, the body of Christ. Um, yeah, that's, that's my view. So. <laughs> I mean, I think it's really interesting because you guys say it's Jehovah's Witnesses, don't you? The other sheep. Well, um, if we're talking about Christ, we're talking about those who would follow him, correct? Yeah, but but I've I've read some articles in the literature. They seem to identify them as Jehovah's Witnesses, the great uh, crowd of they call it the great crowd of other sheep. Ah, uh, it sounds to me as if you have already answered your question. Oh no 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 no! My, this is you. <laughs> no no. This is my question. Uh, you know, couldn't anybody say they are them? And couldn't anybody say they're the faithful slave too? With what, what is the proof of any of that? I mean, I think it's really interesting that Mormons use that, too. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate the concern you have for wanting to know. Um, and Christians, um, in particular Jehovah's Witnesses who do follow Christ, uh, we uh, have always done our best to follow his teachings. He did speak of those uh, who would be the other sheep there in uh, Luke chapter 12. Um verse uh, 32. Um, and then there's also been many other occasions where he spoke about the, the other sheep. Um, do you think that any Christian who follows Christ would consider themselves a part of his fold as a follower of his? Uh, yeah, historically, as I said, it was, it's considered to be Gentiles. That's the almost unanimous uh, opinion historically. So, of course. But so, uh, but so listen. So, so think about that. If uh -huh. Jehovah's Witnesses consider themselves to be Christians, and oh, Jesus spoke of yeah. the other sheep, other sheep being followers of Him, then regardless of whether a Christian is one of Jehovah's Witnesses or um, of another religion who consider themselves to be followers of Christ. Would they not consider themselves to be a part of his fold? Well, they would, but I'm talking about the organization's views. You wouldn't consider anybody else a Christian. They call them, like, Babylon the Great. Any other people who read the Bible or, you know, try to follow Jesus, etc. They call them all Babylon the Great. I, so I'm really not following what you're saying? Well, it, it appears to me as if uh, your, even your intentions to to want to know yeah. um, just what um, Jehovah's Witnesses consider themselves to be uh, may not have the best motive. <gasps> um, it seems as if it's, your, your question doesn't oh. doesn't lend itself to being concerned about um, you know primarily wanting to know uh, the the true meaning of that that term. Oh, uh huh. Um, yeah, because it, you, you you've done extensive research. Um, does it would it offend you if considers if Jehovah's Witnesses consider themselves the other sheep? No. Based off I, of your research and, and looking at your historical. Why why would it um, offend me? I am kind of offended by some of their language about Christians and historic Christianity. Uh, it's like Bible on the yeah. Great and satanic and idolatry and things like that. Like for like for here's one yeah. example. They say it's idolatry to worship Jesus. But they did until the 1950s, so their whole roots is idolatry. But they but they don't believe that; they just supply it to other people. And who is they you're describing? Oh well, the organization. They they say worship of Jesus is idolatry. What organization? The Watchtower yeah. Bible and Tract Society, and they worship oh, okay. Jesus till the 1950s. Which interestingly, at the same time, they came out with the New World Translation. So. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your call and your concern, and you have a good day. Thank you. God bless you. King Demal. Hi. Um, I was just doing some phone witnessing. Uh, do you have a minute? Great. Can I share a scripture with you? You sound like you're in a good mood. 
<laughs> well, this is the kingdom hall, so. Uh-huh. Oh, it, it, okay. <laughs> well, um, the verse is Matthew twenty-seven fifty-one. You want me to just read it? What what what, uh, what church are you calling from? I'm not at a church. What do you mean? So you're you're sharing a scripture. What? Yeah, what, I'm just. Uh, uh, I can share it. I mean, I'm just here at my house. You know. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Do you, what what church do you go to? Oh, I fellowship with other Christians, but you know, we don't really advertise ourselves or anything. We just, you know, like to focus on the gospel. Oh, I see. Um. Well, so. Because because we, you know, we have we have weekly meetings here as well. Uh huh. Right. <clears throat> and so right now we're in the middle of a, a Bible class. Oh, you said you had a minute, so that's why I asked Sorry, if you I had. Just... A minute. Okay. Well, no problem. Well, check out Matthew twenty seven fifty one, and and you know, I was just wondering what it means to you, especially in the light of the Book of Hebrews and the New Covenant, Ezekiel thirty six. Um, it's just such an epic verse. So, well, thanks, anyways. Okay. Bye. Bye.